Ben, tell us who you are. I know you're an NFT guy. We're going to be talking about that, but how'd you get into NFTs in the first place? Like, tell us your story. Sure. Well, I go by Ben Jammin. And, ben Jammin. Uh, Ben Jammin. Uh, that like nickname it. came when I was like two years old. My dad was just holding me up saying, we have been jamming, you know, the, the Bob Marley. So he loves it. I love it. I stuck with it ever since. Nice. And, um, you know, I grew up working in the restaurant industry, doing everything from busing tables all the way up to managing restaurants. And cool. while I was doing all that, I went to school for computer programming and web development. Mm -hmm. While I was in school, I um, created one of the first 3D printing college clubs in the country. And I started getting recruited hmm. by uh, military manufacturers and defense contractors. Oh, and, okay. Um, yeah, it's and so, twist. yeah, and it kind of, it gets thrown around. My my college days are a little weird. Yeah. So um, so I started getting recruited there, and then at the same time, I was um, putting out this fantasy sports data. So I was collecting um, baseball data from all over the internet and combining it together, putting together projections and rankings and all this stuff for uh, daily fantasy sports like FanDuel and, and DraftKings. Okay. And I ended up putting this stuff out for free and people loved it so much, they asked me to start charging for it. And so I ran that as a business okay. for four years <laughs> while I was in school. Nice. Um, I sold that company as I graduated school, went to go and work at one of the defense contractors. I ran a, a, pro, uh, a product line there called Nuclear Actuators, where we sold these New, these actuators almost like faucets that would turn big valves on and off. So these valves could be the size of a room and you would have water flowing through them for nuclear power plants or aircraft carriers or submarines that yeah. if they were to ever overheat, our valves would help cool them down. And so I did that okay. for about two years. But And, and you would that. 3D print them or like how were you involved in that though? That's Yeah, so where's the I, connection I just, there? I was just running this 3D printing college club. Yeah. Just like, like a regular college club. And I ended up getting funding from New York State and the, the college. And the college is, uh, I'm, I'm in Long Island, New York, and it's called Farmingdale State College. Okay. And I was the only student at the time who had his own lab. I had my own name on the door and I had full funding from the school. So that got the attention. Snap. Yeah, that got the attention of these, these um, military defense contractors. And so they started recruiting me while I was in school. Nice. And um, I just visited their their facilities just to see like what they were doing with 3D printing. And they were still kind of far off, but it just got me in the door. And yeah. so they basically held a spot for me once I graduated. Nice. OK. Yeah. All right. So I'm, you're working for these guys. Mm -hmm. and it seems to seem like really important uh, stuff that you were working on, like necessary to yeah. maintain the the this stuff from overheating because you don't want you don't want nuclear stuff overheating we know what happens when when that overheats yep exactly so i was doing that for about two years it was kind of a pseudo military environment a lot of ex-military ex-navy uh working there so it was it was very you know it was kind of tough to do for for a while you know really long hours and very strict requirements but yeah i learned a lot from it and you know i I took that job because I needed some stability and structure in my life after being sure. on the restaurant, waiter, bartender schedule for half a, decade, there. half a decade, you know? Been there, yeah. So I was like, all right, I need to straighten out my life. I need to get a schedule. I need to wake up early. And so that's wait, why- Wait, 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 what year was this? How, how long ago was this? That was three years ago. Okay, okay. So three, three, years, three, years, three years ago. ago. So I did that for two years, yeah. Okay. And um, and then I wanted to get back into the the less structured life because I I figured I found out what <laughs> my that real structure was like. I was like, let me let me take a step back a little. So yeah, uh, okay, yeah. I just got back into the whole startup web design life, and that's where I found you know NFTs and kind of took me on this journey. And now I'm doing this, whatever you would call this, uh, full time. <laughs> uh, I'm really enjoying it. Full time. So this is your. This is your whole gig now is working with NFTs. It's paying the bills, man. Paying wow. Bills. All right. So do you have a, a, a business that you started yep. like buying and selling NFTs or selling like, you know what? Let's just, what is an NFT? Why don't we just start there? Gotcha. Uh, sorry. And then, um, you know, what do we, I don't know anything about them. I know sure. it's non, non fungal token. Is that, did I get that right? It's non fungible. Totally. fungible yeah. <laughs> i'm like i'm picturing mushrooms yeah, like, right. <laughs> what does this thing have to do with mushrooms i don't get it right. at all uh that's funny all right so break give us break us down what are these things 
Sure. So you're going to hear a lot of buzzwords because I'm, I'm going to do my best to um, use words that people may have um, heard before or might be able to have some sort of understanding. So like people know the word Bitcoin, but they might not necessarily know what it means. They yeah. hear the word blockchain. They might not necessarily know what it means, but yeah. they know it's different from like a squirrel or something like so they, <laughs> they, they, you, know, you, you kind of understand a little bit that we it's about hope. Okay. Yeah, exactly. yeah, so yeah, some yeah. people will get it. So essentially, there's different kinds of blockchain technology. And okay. blockchain is a way over the internet for um, records to be solidified and stored and basically used as a public ledger for anybody all over the world to see what what other people are doing with their transactions. That's kind of a, a, a simple way to break that down. Okay. And so there are different type of cryptocurrencies built on different kind of blockchains. So for instance, Bitcoin, which is like the, the big whale that everybody knows about, that is the, the major cryptocurrency. The first one, it's been, you know, it's kind of like the, the lead dog in the race that everybody looks at that to see what's going on. When Bitcoin's way up, mostly all the rest of crypto is way up and it goes the same way going down okay so you have all these different types of cryptocurrencies that do different things now some of them are inflationary meaning that there's unlimited supply and you can make as many as you want forever basically like a fiat currency right but then you also have some that are deflationary so um some of them are burned every once in a while. So there are um, like, for for instance, Bitcoin is capped at a max supply. So you can never right. have any more. So if someone loses one or they have it in their digital wallet and they can't forget their passcode, it's gone forever. Yeah. So now each individual Bitcoin sat or piece or coin or token that you owned it's becomes more. more valuable no matter what, because there's just less available in the supply. Right. So um, Bitcoin does something different than Ethereum does, then does something different than XRP or Ripple does. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but essentially it's, you can't compare it to like the US dollar versus, you know, the, the yen or something, because those are both currencies used for the same exact things. But with okay. Bitcoin, it's more of a store of value, like gold that you want to hold for a while that you don't really spend. It's kind of just more of, of a, what you expect to be an appreciating asset for your portfolio to hedge hopefully. against the dollar, hopefully, hopefully. right? Yeah. That, that's the plan. Um, and then you have ones like Ethereum, which actually are a cryptocurrency that you can build a lot of different projects off of. And it's a lot easier to use than Bitcoin would be. So there's okay. a lot of big differences, but at the end of the day, cryptocurrency, blockchain, those two buzzwords, and then on top of that, you're able to create these tokens or these coins on top of these blockchains using cryptocurrency. So we can okay. get into a, a little bit of the specifics of what that means. But does that help a little bit of a breakdown of, of like the basis of where we're starting? So, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it, you know, it makes me think that these NFTs are, from what I've seen so far, they're basically digital images that now from what you've just explained are attached to specific blockchains of a specific cryptocurrency am i am i kind of close to the target yeah you, yeah you we're definitely getting there but one of okay. the things that's most misunderstood about nfts which stand for non-fungible tokens right. is that it's just about art and pictures so there's so much more you can do with it which is really exciting it's not so, just about art and pictures. You're no, saying. no, not okay. even close. No, that's okay. just what that's what is most recognizable to people. And that's yeah. right now, technologically wise, what is the most established. So um, think about it. You know, when you had the Internet in the, you know, the early 2000s, there was a lot of unknowns about what you could do, what type of programming languages would be introduced. Right. Like back then, you didn't have the same type of, you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all these different things, they weren't as advanced and you didn't have all these, you know, programming languages and, and templates of application that people can use. So things have evolved over time. So yeah. right now there's a lot of unknown about where we can go, but there's a lot of people planning to get there. So we can talk about some of the things that are happening. Okay. And so essentially the way to understand a non fungible token would be that when you have a dollar bill, you can't rip up that bill into two pieces 
right? Like right. you can't have, you know, one side of a dollar bill, another side of a dollar bill, and then equal 50 cents. So yeah. that bill itself is unique. It has a serial number. You can't break it down any further besides trading it for something else, right? Okay. Um, but Bitcoin is uh, fungible in the fact that you could break it down as fractionalized as you want. You don't have to buy one Bitcoin. I can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin, which right, right. Is called sats. There, I, f I forget the exact amount, but it's like a, a million sats or something equals a Bitcoin. I, I forget okay. the exact um, formula, but yeah. So you, you can have a bunch of different pieces of that. So that's a, a good way to explain it. It's like you have a dollar, which you can't rip up. So like picture that as like a piece of art or yeah. a lease or a contract or a deed or something like right. that, right? It's non-fungible, yeah. you can't tear it up. That piece of art that you have, it's based on what that piece of art is, that painting, that that one image, right? If sure. you rip the Mona Lisa in half, you're ruining the value of it. You're not gaining that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, that so, makes sense. Um, so that, that's a good way to think about it. So when you think of like Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, you can buy fractions of it. But okay. when you have um, a piece of art, that piece of art is what it is. Like it's it's unique, and, and you can have you can make copies of it. But each individual copy that you have is owned by somebody. And so digitally, my name or my receipt is on this token. 